Hey guys, and welcome back to Layer Inspired, powered by Icon Plus. It's so great to have you all here. So since this is powered by Icon Plus, I'm gonna start with a really quick news um, announcement for you. So quite interesting actually, Korea's largest bank, Shinhan Bank and Icon, launched Shinhan Bank KYC authentication on Icon's My ID. And with Shinhan's affiliates also joining, customers can now remotely open accounts across financial institutions with one My ID login. So some very interesting news coming out from um, the Icon networks there. So today, if you haven't guessed, I have a very interesting guest joining me. Um, he is sort of known as a Twitter philanthropist, sending thousands of dollars across the internet. So of course, joining me today is Bill Pute. Bill, great hey, to have you. with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. So we've sort of just connected through Twitter. It's 2020, it's kind of just what happens. That's the way um, the world goes now. Literally, and you have completely taken charity to a whole new level. Um, I see constantly, it's sort of like this tweet, I'm paying for somebody's dinner. Um, retweet this, I'm sending a bunch of money to a lot of veterans. And I think this is so interesting. So I'm super excited to understand your background, how you got here and everything that's going on. So sort of talk to me firstly about the most that you've actually sent through Twitter. I know that Trump retweet, retweeted you about a year ago. Um, so how yeah. much? Well, I've given away a bunch of different amounts, 10,000. I just did, I think, what is probably my biggest giveaway so far, which is $50,000. And yes, I actually did pay it. You know, a lot of people say, they don't say it anymore, but when I first started, they thought it was like a scam or that it wasn't real. Um, and now it turns out, you know, I'm the real guy and everybody's asking me, you know, are these other people paying? But I paid $50,000. And then you may have seen that uh, with the famous YouTuber, Mr. Beast, who I'm sure you've heard of, him and I gave away $100,000 together. So those would probably be the two biggest ones we've done. Yeah. And it's interesting because before I had you on, I was obviously doing my research, finding out a little bit more about you. So we have chatted, but it's good just to find out a bit more. And like you said, people were calling it a scam because it's crazy how much money you're sending over the internet. So you kind of popped out of nowhere. You've already got, I think it's just over 3 million followers um, on Twitter alone. So where did this come from? I know there's Polte Group. So where did this philanthropist in you come from? And when did you get the idea to do Twitter? Well, my grandfather's name was Bill Polte and he was a very wealthy guy, very good guy, uh, born in 1932. So de depression era guy. And him and I got along very well, and, and, and I learned a lot from him in terms of business. And then at age 23, I started my own business, which was to acquire other companies. And frankly, Leia, over the last 10 years, I've just done extremely well financially. I didn't ever think that I would be uh, as successful financially as I had become. Uh, obviously, I learned a lot from my grandfather, so that was very helpful. Uh, people sometimes think I inherited money. Uh, I hope I didn't inherit money and I haven't uh, because my dad hasn't died yet. And my dad's obviously my grandfather's kid. So uh, in any event, um, I've made a lot of money. I'm 32 years old. And I say to myself, you know, why the hell are we not giving money away on the Internet? And so I had this idea to give away $10,000. And the next thing you know, the whole thing went viral. I mean, it went everywhere. And I had enough credibility on Twitter that people knew it was probably real and, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And so it went viral and then Twitter philanthropy was born. And it's just been it's just been a viral deal ever since then. I have a really niggling question. Right. So, you know, you send Bitcoin sometimes and I'm in crypto, um, as a lot of people know. And often people will say to you, and by um, the way, everybody who's watching this, we got about one thousand five hundred live viewers, which is good. Yeah, go follow it's Leia when you're doing this. So I have a lot of my teammates who are on, so they'll probably all go follow you when we're done. That's kind. Right. Thank you so much. Just so much, so much charity. I'm loving it. Too kind. Um, but you know, people often, a lot of the time, when somebody wins the lottery, for example, they don't want people to know how much money they have. One of the main things about crypto is, you know, people like to say anonymous. They don't want people to know because often you get fake people coming to you. Um, not even fake people, just giving you a fake scenario saying, please like give me more money. Like how do you navigate through that? Because once you give, how do you sort of draw that line? And you know, when someone DMs you or something and says, um, oh gosh, you know, I help pay my family's medical bills. 
what do you do? How do you emotionally detach yourself and draw that line? Well, it's very emotionally difficult and you're astute for picking that up. A lot of people don't realize how hard it is. And again, people are going through a lot more suffering than you and me are ever are out there. So I'm very sensitive to that. But I've had people say to me, this is so hard being able to figure out what's going on. I have total respect for what you're doing, you know, once they try to do it for a day or two. Um, so I would just say that, you know, over time you develop an instinct. And my thought is that, look, if 90% of the people that I help are good people, which I assume, uh, you know, my, the, my worldview is basically that 90% of people are good people. Uh, mm -hmm. about 10% of people, um, you know, either are misguided or what have you. So if 10% of them are scams, I'm fine with those odds because you know what, for what you're saying about the internet and everything, uh, that happens in life. I mean, people have been getting scammed and, uh, stolen money from for, for centuries, thousands of years, actually. And the only difference, which is why it's more visible now is that the information flow or the amount of people that are potentially able to access it in a quicker fashion, right? If you think about it, like, let's say there's some scammer in New York on the streets in New York. Well, if you're in Los Angeles, you're not gonna necessarily see that scammer. Um, but if all of a sudden you uh, have an internet, then somebody in Los Angeles can see a scammer in New York. That's just the way the world is going. So I view it as a uh, uh, problem as, old as as the world um it's nothing new it's just technology gets us to think differently about the problem and we're trying to think differently about philanthropy so on a small small scale if i may i can oh gosh the audio is is a bit rough i'm not sure what's going on hopefully that might pass is it rough on your end the audio it is when you talk but i don't know if it is when i talk okay um i'm hoping we can sort of sort this out um okay so on a small scale i can sort of relate to you because i often find that um a lot of the time there are people potentially um homeless on the streets and they often come to you and they ask for money and sometimes you don't know whether they're scamming you in some respect you know or whether you know their cause is actually genuine um so i have a similar mentality and i'm kind of just like okay if i give a couple pounds a couple dollars um it shouldn't be the end of the world. Just so, sort of see what I mean? Yes, I do very much so. And I'm just checking here the feed to see because it says we have zero people in here, which doesn't make any sense. No, now it says we have a thousand. So I think we're good. Yeah, we got uh, a thousand. I'm just not yeah. sure what's, what's going on with the audio. I might take my AirPods out and uh, see if it, see if the audio yeah, fixes. see if that works because I know that you Let's tried have a when we... Yeah, are you there? I can't hear your audio, but uh, but the but the crackling went away. But anyway, while you figure that out, I'll go ahead and answer, which is just, yeah, it's the same situation that you have when you give a homeless person money or when you give uh, anybody money for that matter. I mean, you're always taking that risk. But what I try to do or how I try to program my brain is basically to tell myself, okay, Bill, like I'll give you an example. Yesterday, or not yesterday, two days ago, I was giving money to a guy who's on the side of the road. And, you know, my first instinct is like, hey, you know, what probably everybody's instinct is. But if you start to look at that person as a human being and say, you know what, maybe that person, you know, needs a little bit of a hand up you know, it kind of mm -hmm. changes your worldview. And so I'm just trying to change a little bit of the worldview as it's known um, on the internet from all this hate and vitriol. Everybody's hating on each other these days. And we are a, um, we are a safe haven of people helping people. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully my audio is fixed. It's still not fixed, is it? Yeah, it's doing it when you do it. Is it doing it when I do it? Because I don't hear it. Yours is a little bit rough. Is mine entirely rough or can you hear me? Is it still okay? Can I, keep going? I can still hear you a little bit, but yeah, it's it's a little rough. Yours is, but mine's fine. I don't know if that's me or what, but. Okay, all right, I, I don't know. So I'm gonna ask you a question, another question. Sure. And I'll try to figure out what you answer. So I wanna keep this going. Um, I wonder whether you had an opinion on how charities are running because you're essentially going directly to the people who are cutting out that middleman. So I wonder if you had anything, um, any issues with that middleman, whether you think there's something better about going directly to the person, whether it be charities yeah. take up the amount of money. So I'm going to figure out my audio while you tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, you know, there's no middleman in the sense that when I go to give somebody money on Cash App, 
I don't have to pay for the fancy charity executives to go and, uh, you know, have a ball or, you know, uh, fancy catering and alcohol and all this other kind of stuff. You know, I don't need to pay for all that overhead. I can just go ahead, boom, and send money to somebody. So, so yes, I think that that has been very attractive. And I think what's also attractive is that so many of the people who are on Twitter who see me helping people, what they're doing is they're helping out other people and they're able to see people on my feed and they're able to send money to people. And that's what I'm really interested in is having a viral community of givers, because if I'm just Bill Pulte giving away money, you know, I can only give out so much money, right? It's just math. And so, um, you know, what happens when I run out of money, right? So we need to create a community of givers who have uh, the same passion of helping people. And, you know, we posted yesterday, for example, a gentleman, he has a hospital bill, I think for something like $5,600 or something. And he's dying of cancer. I think he's dying of cancer and it's terrible. You know, he's, he's trying to fight it and God willing, he fights it, but we're going to be able to get him $5,600. Now imagine if he had to go through a bunch of charity and a bunch of red tape and all this crap and no, boom, I can just pop it right up on Twitter. And by the way, if anybody's watching and hasn't donated, please go on my page and do that. But, um, you know, that's what I think is so exciting about what we're doing. So why do you think people aren't necessarily doing it so much? So you often hear um, a lot of different um, celebrities will sort of say, you know, whether it comes to like the mobile type or whatever it is, they'll often say, um, you know, you normal people should take an X amount of migrants, you normal people should do this. But us normal people, you know, we can't do as much as you guys can do. So why aren't they doing it and how can we get more people to do it? Well, it's a great question. I don't totally know the answer, but what I believe is that small changes made over a long period of time on a persistent basis will yield change. And so we've only been doing this for a year. And if you think about it, we've made basically celebrities giving away money on Twitter, like a hot thing. I mean, it's like, I mean, Cardi B's giving away money, Jeffree Star, Mr. Beast. I've seen Ninja help out people on there. So um, so I do think people are catching the bug. It's just, I don't know any other way than to lead by example and to try to get as many of those people involved, which I've, which I've worked very hard to get them involved. Okay. So you're working hard to get these big names involved. You mentioned Cardi B, um, you know, that she's sort of doing it. Um, what about, um, new upcoming sort of people that we can expect to start getting involved? Do you have any interesting partnerships? Uh, more people joining this team that we can expect to see some incredible twists at the last platform. Well, the thing that I think is probably the biggest thing is that, in my opinion, the pandemic moved forward the digitization of the economy, yes. I think, 10 or 20 years. And so when you have that kind of pull forward uh, inertia, some things get a lot more attention. I'll give you an example. Uh, Cash App by Square, for example. Now, before you had Venmo and you had these other things, but if you look at the functionality of Cash App, for example, what they've been able to do is really create a viral thing. I mean, whether it's Cardi B giving away money, et cetera. And people have the Cash App. So I think over time, you know, and it's just my opinion, nobody listened to my advice, but uh, that these that these Cash Apps and, you know, things like Cash App are probably going to eat away at the banks and eat away at the whole banking system. You know, they sell Bitcoin on there, which I know you're a big fan of. And so I just think that, you know, we just have to be patient. And I actually think that you'll be surprised. Technology and this this crisis, this crazy crisis, this crazy pandemic does have some silver linings in the sense that uh, some of the technological changes that would have happened over 10, 15 years are now happening. And in terms of philanthropy, that's actually, I mean, you're going to see some things that aren't so good on a short term basis. But over time, if we can lower cost of goods and if we can help people um, and help more people, uh, through the the greater technology being implemented, to me, I think that we're that much closer to getting widespread philanthropy. And I think you make a really interesting point about this pandemic and how it's sort of been a catalyst to bring everything forward, essentially, um, from yes. a technological perspective. So you use Bitcoin um, to send money across the board. So this is super cool. This is a fantastic use case. This is actually incredible marketing um, for the asset. So talking about this, why Bitcoin? How did you get into Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin, you know, so first of all, I subscribe to the idea that the government um, 
you know, has certain bounds as to what it can do in terms of printing money and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So you could look at gold, you could look at Bitcoin. You know, I happen to believe that the Bitcoin paper uh, by Satoshi was probably the greatest computer science deal that's happened in a long time, at least since the, the Internet. And how he designed it on a decentralized basis, on a trustless basis, absolutely brilliant. So, so first of all, government printing. Second of all, you know, mathematically, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's brilliant. Um, and number three, and I would say probably most importantly, because a lot of the people who say, "Oh, Bitcoin's you know not going to make it or whatever," I would just look at adoption. And um, if you look at some of these countries like Africa, you look at some of these countries that don't have stable currencies and who knows you know, the united states government may eventually be there I, I i i don't actually think that the government will be there that's my own my own thought in terms of really being trash currency i don't think that's going to happen i mean it's just i i don't see how even if you have massive inflation you know you have the world's largest inventory so i'm not one of these guys who says oh the sky's falling you know you need to go buy bitcoin because of that but but I do think that the adoption is going to really pick up in the United States. I think it already is picking up in the United States. I think it's picking up in these developed worlds. And I think the genie's out of the bottle. But who knows? The, the U.S. government could ban it. I, I don't know. So there's two points here. But so the first point um, I just kind of want to get into is how you got into Bitcoin, though, because a lot of the time it can be um, perceived as like a scam or whatever or um, a point of being. Second point um, is about adoption, like which I'll get to, but specifically, when did you first hear about Bitcoin? Um, I think in like 2015, something like that. And, you know, I just liked how electronic it was, how, you know, again, I've had success in business, so I've wired large amounts of money. And when you wire large amounts of money, um, the, the rigmarole that you have to go through is crazy. And so, when I when I was sending Bitcoin to myself or to different people, I was like, "Holy hell! You can give away all this money that quickly? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. This is this is a disruptive technology." And I think anybody who underestimates Bitcoin, in my opinion, uh, does so at their own risk. I think it's very foolish. Um, is my opinion. I'm totally with you. So you are sending money with Bitcoin to people across the other side of the world. How really interesting is that people um in likes of south america or africa and so on they may not have let's talk about africa actually they may not have um the kind of financial infrastructure that you see to the extent that we have in the west um but they have internet connection and they have smartphones um and that for me is the coolest part of blockchain technology and Bitcoin, because you can actually send them money in a way that you could never before because even if you wanted to send the money with fiat, with dollars, you literally Correct. couldn't because they didn't have a way to access it. Correct. Correct. And I think it can, I think it can do more for world poverty than almost anything that's going on right now, if it's properly done. And, you know, I'm not too educated on the lightning network and all this other nonsense, but I will tell you, <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm calling it nonsense, but somebody's going to figure out how to get this thing and get it to work well. And, um, yeah. So I, I think I think it, I think we're just in the beginning stages. And to be clear, I don't send Bitcoin to people uh, around the world. What I do is I send them uh, cash app. I send them money to cash app. And then they then I in some cases make it requisite that they buy Bitcoin with it, because I think that it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be worth more in the future than it is today. Absolutely. So like you said, um, a lot of the stuff you've done is. Um, built in in some ways so talk to me about your day to day what the hell are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis other than sending money across the world well that's a lot of it these days but um i would say that usually what i do in the morning is i wake up and i try to say who can i help today and somebody might not believe that but it's true and I do that actually in many ways for selfish reasons. A lot of people think, oh, you, you know, you have to help people for the sake of helping people and all this other stuff. That's correct. But you also have to help people for your own self. And so yeah. I always have that attitude, who can I help today? And so frankly, I look through my Twitter mentions a lot, my app mentions. I mean, this is crazy to think about, but sometimes I get 50, sometimes I'll get 30 to 70, depends, in some cases actually more, uh, mentions per second, per second, you can think about that. Um, 
And so um, you can't even imagine yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I, tr I try not to tweet for a day or two, just to be frank, because what I try to do is use that downtime, quote unquote downtime, which I still get probably a mention every, you know, certainly every minute. Um, but uh, I try to use that to go through my mentions because usually you can see the best people who need the most help in the mentions. I mean, if somebody's really having a hard time, you know, it's, you know, it, it can be often easy to see that person. So right. So I like, I wake up, say, who can I help? Boom, go into mentions, look at my mentions, you know, go from there, send it to my team, say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? You know, sometimes if I need a second eye or sometimes I'll just post a campaign. Like there was this girl, I don't know if you saw this, but she was seven years old in Detroit, African-American girl, and she was uh, mauled by a dog. She was actually eaten by a dog while she was on her bike. When was this? Story. This was uh, months ago, but I'm just giving okay. an example of, you know, one, one of the cases. And so I find this out and so I'm reading the news story and boom, I just start tweeting, you know, and I've tried to be more disciplined where I say, okay, if I'm going to do this, I, you know, I got to, you know, I'm just like, when I see those kind of things that pull at your heartstrings, you yeah. know, it's just like, shit, I, I, I you know, I, I'm going to make this happen. And, you know, another example was last summer, we helped save baby Maisie. I don't know if you saw that, but this young girl, uh, 18 month old was dying, literally dying and needed a terminal drug, a, a drug to save her from terminal, um, this terminal spinal disease. And the good drug company wouldn't give it to her. And so I just went, uh, for lack of a better word, bananas on, on Twitter. Damn. And the team and I, I mean, I probably had thousands of people calling the team and I. So, um, so yeah, so. That's so there, 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 is, there is like that background check then, like you said, you were asking your team to sort of have a second look, essentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because let's be clear. I mean, I'm just one guy. And what I want to do is inspire. And I think I have thousands, if not yeah. tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Me. <laughs> we'll go donate to the cancer patient. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Send links, send links. Yeah. But I think it's really interesting when you said you don't necessarily do it, um, you, you do do it for yourself because there's a part of it which makes, um, which sort of helps you grow. So in the reverse, yeah. as an example, it's kind of like when you're not kind and when you do something nasty, in my opinion, a part of you sort of rots inside. So if you take that idea, then surely when you are kind, some sort of beauty must grow within you. That's correct. In fact, I think the way that it is physiologically is that basically you feel good in the moment. So like if you judge somebody and you say, Hey, you know, that person has this or something like that. And you feel good for a moment, but what you do is you slowly by doing that and you do it in small steps, but the small steps eventually add up to be big steps and you become very unhappy. But what I'm saying in terms of the small judgment is you separate yourself from that person. And so in, in the act of separating yourself from that person in a judgment type of situation, um, you essentially detach yourself from reality. And just the way that, in my opinion, and I, I think it's backed up, but people have to do their own research, is the way the universe is rigged is basically if you separate yourself from people or you separate yourself from reality, um, you can basically slowly but surely become very, very unhappy. And that's actually why you see a lot of rich people so unhappy. A lot of people say to me, Bill, you know, um, you know, you're one of the happier guys, like, you know, you know, and you don't need these jets and all these other things, which I can mm -hmm. afford. And I say, you know what, that is a slow motion train wreck waiting to happen. And the reason is, is because all of a sudden, you, you know, your glass of champagne is too warm or you're, you know, you're not sitting in the right seat in the airplane or something. And you build up all of these little conditionings and, and it can really fuck you up. So, yeah, excuse my language, but. No, go for it. You know, it's how you feel. Um, but quite interesting, actually, someone has just popped up saying, you can have a look. It says, I think I have a fake account send me a message saying I was the winner. So talk to me about that. That's very interesting. Do you often get fake accounts and how do you deal with that? Because of course, you know, you are a public profile and you have been accused of in the past. You have cleared your name. So it must be very difficult having to, you know, having to explain yourself. Yeah, I had some crazy people. Uh, I considered them stalkers because they were 
it's weird. Like when you go from like zero to a hundred, you get all kinds of crazy people come out and how quickly was that? Ten percent. What's that? And how quickly was that zero to a hundred? How what? How quickly uh, was that, zero to hundred? I, mean, I mean, I went from thirty thousand followers and you know July of twenty nineteen to you know uh, two three hundred thousand followers in a period of a week or two. I mean, it was just insane. So. I think what happens when you're a new guy in the block, people say, oh, it must be a scam. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then, I mean, I hate to say it. And again, I'm not trying to judge. I'm just stating a fact, which is that, um, you know, people don't, uh, people get envious. People can get envious. And there were a couple of people, unfortunately, who got envious. But having said that, yes, most of the people know what I say, which is, I will never ask you for money in order to get money in exchange. I will never ask you for a bank account. Uh, if you do, those are scammers. And the only account that you should be listening to is my at Pulte account in terms of whether you've won or not. And that's a verified account. So I know that you had one person ask about that, um, but just totally honestly, uh, out of 3 million people that follow me, uh, there's always going to be, you know, a handful of people who don't know that. But I would say overwhelming majority of the people who follow me and you can even look this up, they know that I don't do it. In fact, they get angry at people like that person. And I tell them, don't get angry at that person. You know, it's an innocent, honest question. But they get angry because they're like, hey, haven't you been paying attention? I, you know, Pulte never would ask you for money in order to get money in return. So, yeah. yeah I, I, I'm so, sure. Michelle and all my followers, because I know we got a lot of them in here, and I think some are probably dropping off because of the sound. But please go follow Leia. Oh, that's super kind. Thank you. Yeah, I do apologize for the audio. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. We'll have to fix that on the next one. Um, but that is um, lovely. You know, like following, they know you essentially. So um, I'm going to sort of um, sort of ask you one last question because I am concerned about the audio. Um, but my last kind of question for you is really, what would you say to somebody um, looking to build a business, um, looking to um, make a become financially stable, make something for themselves? As somebody that's done that, what would you say if you had like three main tips for them? Well, I would just say the one thing is to focus on one thing. The way the universe is rigged, in my opinion, is if you want something and you want it bad enough, chances are you have a pretty good shot at getting it. But if you have all of these desires, all of these unconscious desires, you want three things, six things, 12 things, the way the universe is rigged, and uh, that's the way I look at it, is you won't be successful, in my opinion. I know very few people, frankly, I know very few billionaires and I know very few millionaires who do multiple things and make um, make all their money from multiple things. Most of them know one thing. In fact, I became how I became independently wealthy from my family is I actually made my money in heating and air conditioning. Uh, that has been the business that I have really um, done very well. And I did own another company uh, in the building supply chain uh, and I did well there, too. But my real expertise, actually, if people want to know it, is in heating and air conditioning. Now, you would say, well, Bill, you know, I never knew that you would do that. Or who, who does heating and air conditioning? Look, I enjoy solving problems. But you know what? I focus on one thing. And when it comes to the HVAC, heating and air conditioning, I know what I'm talking about. Now, if you ask me about, you know, uh, uh, you know, so, something else, like even cryptocurrency, right? I don't know all about the Lightning Network. I mean, I'm enough to be an investor. But I'm not looking to make a fortune in that. Otherwise, I would be focusing on that one thing. So I would just say, the way the universe is rigged, pick one thing. Oh, I'm totally with you. Um, you know, find a trend and become an expert at it and do it right, basically. Um, I am really conscious of my audio, so I'm really upset about that. But, Bill, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, my pleasure. I could talk to you for ages about kindness, the universe, um, the way to make magic happen. Um, but unfortunately, my audio. But listen, I will um, I have to have you on again because I we'll want to go. We'll do it again more. sometime, and you can call or DM me anytime. And I try to be as yeah. responsive as possible. So um, let me know. And great, great meeting you and talking to you. And let's hope uh, for everybody's sake that Bitcoin goes to the moon. I'm totally with you. Um, thank you so much. And I'm going to end uh, the broadcast. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. And uh, we'll be in touch. Sounds good. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.